Hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. Are you really gonna say that? You know, that you're starving your kid out? Shocker, Sofa Squad. Another YouTube family channel has been surrounded by wild allegations and has turned out to be completely toxic. I'm talking about eight passengers. I'm talking about Ruby Frankie. And we're gonna talk about all that in today's video. <laughs> Sofa Squad and welcome back to the sofa. The pretend sofa's back there, but guess what? It's missing something. Mr. Roscoe, that's because he's next to me in my arms. And my name is Paul, if you are new here. Roscoe's our little mascot. Now, today, you saw my entry. You saw the thumbnail. You know why we're here. You know why we gathered around the fake sofa. We are going to be finally talking about the Ruby Frank Eight Passengers Jody Hildebrandt drama, okay? This is next level. I've been following it behind the scenes of the other stuff I've been doing with my mouth on the ground and I'm finally able to sit here and address a lot of the stuff so here's how we're gonna do the video because obviously you already know so much stuff has happened at this point this will probably be a long video I am going to mostly focus on the things that I heard the most from the sofa squad people about like being like what do you think about this what do you think about that and kind of like an overview of it and then we'll pick up from there and continue following it on the channel when stuff comes out because already with this right here I'm like well now that this came out whatever so we're gonna we're gonna talk about a lot of things in this video and the way we'll do that is through articles, interviews, clips, news things, all that kind of stuff. So just be prepared. Go on and get you some coffee or, you know, whatever it is that tickles your fancy and well, get it comfortable on the sofa. And then what I want to do is start off with just some basics of the nuts and bolts of the case, how we arrived here. So let's go ahead and start with that. Okay, so Ruby Frankie and her husband Kevin, they had six children, or they have six children, and they had a channel that was called Eight Passengers. Now, this channel was like a family channel, that a vlog channel, like that kind of a thing. And we're gonna watch some clips here in one second. But basically, what started happening is people were like listening to some of the videos and like her talking about punishments and things like that, and they were like, eh, girl, it, this ain't right, right? And so petitions were put out, channels canceled. So Ruby gets hooked up with a woman named Jody Hildebrandt, who we're gonna talk about a lot about her okay Jody runs another YouTube channel connections and so once Ruby's situation was like messed up she kind of put her focus on that okay now <laughs> this is where it gets tawdry okay so let's look at a quick clip from court tv with Vinny. we love Vinny. i uh, talking about the case and one thing i want you to look at with this is like hear what he says but then really pay attention to the screenshot or the things that he does of the eight passengers youtube channel now, it's been it's been taken down right uh, but just look at the video title stuff like that and i'll tell you why when we come back hey, frankie here she is 41 years old mother of six children and a mom influencer. This is someone who goes on social media and talks about the way that she does what she does, whether it's products, raising kids. And she launched the family YouTube page in 2015. You're taking a look at it. Um, 2.28 million subscribers, 1,200 videos uploaded, um, all featuring her family, mostly featuring her children. Uh, going camping, sick in Mexico, um, unexpected friend, um, things like this. Okay, so you heard him talk and all that type of stuff, and you saw the videos. Now, one reason I want you to pay attention to that is because as we get into this case and you see the titles of these videos, and we see this often with many family vlogging channels and stuff like that, where it's like this monetization of the family, of the activities of the family. This, oh, we're so happy, and da 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 da. And then, like, the allegations like this that come out, and you're over here like, oh, what? You know, and that's all my mind can go back to are these videos and stuff like that, but this is what's going on behind the scenes. So on that note, let's talk about uh, very quickly the nuts and bolts of like what really took place and like why, you know, arrests were made and all this kind of stuff. Okay, so prosecutors are alleging that Frankie and Hildebrandt either caused or allowed someone to torture Frankie's 12-year-old son and injure her 10-year-old daughter. Both the children were starved and harmed emotionally, prosecutors said. Now, what I want to do is read the press release that came out about this, and then we're going to get a little bit more into like who Jody is, 911 phone 
phone calls, that type of stuff. But like, let's just read from the horse's mouth type thing what the cops say happened. Okay, so you'll see on the screen here, this is from the Santa Clara Irvine's, or Ivine's uh, Public Safety Department press release. Now it says, on August 30th, 2023, around 1050 hours, a report came into our dispatch center regarding a juvenile asking for help. The calling party stated the juvenile appeared to be emaciated and malnourished with open wounds and duct tape around the extremities. The juvenile was asking for food and water. The condition of the juvenile was so severe that they were seen by Santa Clara Ivine's EMS and transported to a local area hospital. Information was obtained by police that other juveniles in similar condition may be in a nearby home. Officers arrived at the home and searched the residence, and locating another juvenile in a similar physical condition of malnourishment. The juvenile was also transported by EMS to the hospital for treatment. A search warrant was obtained in connection with this incident. During the search of the home, evidence was located consistent with the markings found on the juvenile. The Department of Child and Family Services was contacted, and in a joint effort with the Springfield Police Department, four minor children were taken into the care of the Department of Child and Family Services. Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie were arrested in connection with the incident. Due to the sensitive nature of this case, no additional information will be released at this time. Okay, so now obviously since this has come out, like lots of information has come out, okay? So there's that. We're going to talk about a lot of it. Before we get into the 911 phone call, because that's where we're going to kind of head next, I want to talk very quickly about Jody, because this is the home that the child left and went to the neighbors at. So let's do that, and then we'll listen to the 911 phone call. So Jody Hildebrandt, she is the founder of Connections Classroom. Now, this is like a mental, emotional healing company based in Utah. Now, Jody and Ruby are business partners. And like I said earlier, when the Eight Passengers channel went like bye-bye, all that kind of stuff, this is where Ruby put a lot of her focus in this. Now, Ruby was listed as, on the Connections website as a certified mental fitness trainer. Yikes. <laughs> okay. Now, we're going to get into a lot of that stuff here in a little bit. What I want to do right now is, before we get to the 911 phone call, I just want to give you more of an idea of who Jody is. And I'm going to read her bios and we're going to play a video from the website because, yo, Mama Yama, it's nasty. Okay, so as you see here it says are you ready to feel empowered hello i'm jody ms your mental fitness and relationship expert now side note y'all this is one of these things where this is why i implore you i implore you always be very careful when people are saying touting their horns way loud right be weary, especially in things like this, right? You know how I'm always like, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not none of that fancy stuff. I don't want there to ever be any misconception that I'm trying to play myself off like that. I mean, clearly, y'all, I've got the golden girls back there. Okay, we know I'm not too serious up in here, right? But it's because of stuff like this where I'm an expert. I have all the answers for you. N no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Be very careful uh, of these type people. So anyways, with that being said, let's keep going. So she says, I've spent over 25 years working with people just like you to help facilitate positive and powerful change. I began practicing in the psychotherapy world and my patients were not healing. Well, I could have told you that, girl. When I began empowering people by educating them with principle of truth, learning to be honest, responsible, and humble, I saw my patients radically change right in front of me. You don't have to be a victim to your circumstances or the people around you. You can have the life you want, but you must dispose of distortions, ugly lies, in order to live in truth, connection, and freedom. Start your training with connections to work on the foundation necessary to uncover the truth. You have the power to make positive, long-lasting changes that transform your life and completely change the path that you're on. See you soon. It's the toxic positivity for me, okay? It's giving Lori Daybell. It's giving that vibe, okay? And we could just be in the same, I mean, I would be very curious to know. <laughs> Like, if there's a connection here. Again, this whole, the distortion, the whole, all the stuff. Red flag central. Now, let's move on to this next one. And it says, my story, Jody. She says, my style is compassionate yet direct and clear of what is necessary to fully change and champion any addictive or self-destructive behavior. Whether it be ravenous addictions, feelings of worthlessness or inadequacy, conflicts in relationships, intimacy problems, communication breakdowns, and frankly, any block 
block that prevents having and creating peace and joy. I have counseled thousands of individuals and families of all ages and situations with my unique style of educating about the power of choice and the, and the need for impeccable honesty, rigorous responsibility, and vulnerable humility that which have empowered souls to heal and grow. I love to work with people and see them change. I'm very passionate about this work and seeing it go throughout the world. I look forward to working with you and seeing you find peace, happiness, and freedom in your life. I received my Bachelor of Arts degree in English and my graduate work in educational psychology, earning a Master's of Science. I began working at Cirque Lodge, which was at the time growing to become a national and now internationally known drug and alcohol treatment center. Now we're going to hear from neighbors, from victims of theirs, family members who will talk about their unique style, okay? It's giving raging narcissist, it's giving psychopath. Now I'm not anyone who can give those, you know, what do you call those, uh, you know, diagnoses seriously. This is just me spouting off here. I don't know if there really are these things, but it just feels toxic like that, right? Because the, the behaviors, if alleged, uh, are true. I mean, y'all, zero business, zero business telling anyone how to live their life. And we'll hear from people who will learn that, you know, and the reason why I say think narcissism is because we'll hear from victims that are like, well, they take, they, Jody, takes private information and weaponizes it against you. This is a tactic that we see oftentimes with the behavior of narcissists. But again, we need more like Dr. Grande up in here to really speak on that. I, I'd be curious to know, side note, if he's made a video. Surely he's made a video at this point. I haven't looked, obviously, but I'm going to go after this video, so I definitely need to check that out and to see because, I mean, this is just full of just absolute brokenness. Okay, now, speaking of brokenness, <laughs> let's go look at the video from her website. I can't believe the website's still up, but thank the Lord. This is like the welcome thing on her website or whatever, so let's, let's watch this. Welcome to Connections. I'm Jody Hildebrandt. So glad you're with us. If you're like me, you've had pain in your life. It could be from a divorce, work conflicts, relationship issues with children, grandchildren, spouse, anxiety, depression, or fear that you don't understand, feelings that you're not enough or that you're unlovable. Connections is the solution. You can change. You can experience feelings of being whole, centered, liberated, connected, empowered, and free. Come and see for yourself. There's something here for you. Now, the amount of people that have come forward and said that she has destroyed their life and attempted to, and then to listen to this right here, can't roll my eyes hard enough at it, okay? Absolutely, like fire ants in my bloodstream. Oh, I mean, literally just really cooks my grits. Okay, now, so this is an idea of this right here, this person right here, because one thing that we're gonna find is that she's, I mean, the kids escaped from her house for, for God's sakes, right? Okay, now back to that. Let's listen to some clips of the 911 phone call. Now here's the thing, trigger warning up in here. Roscoe, trigger warning. Trigger warning, everybody. If, this, if stuff like this bothers you, just skip over the next like minute or so. What we're gonna do is I've only picked out a few parts of this that I'm gonna talk about because we hear the neighbor talking about number one, the state of the child that's over there, but also of Jody, of his, you know, the situation with it all in all. And he gets upset, which it gets me every time I've listened to it. But long story short, let's listen to these clips. I'll, I only have like one, one, two, three, five of them, and I'll make some commentary along the way. Please hold. Tell me exactly what's happened. I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. And he uh, said he had just came from a neighbor's house, and we know there's been problems at this neighbor's house. He's emaciated, he's got tape around his legs, he's hungry, and he's thirsty. Okay, so we hear the state of this boy. He's hungry, he's emaciated, he has tape around his legs. That image right here in your mind, rewind just a little bit and listen to the things that Jody was just saying about how she's gonna save your life. Rewind a little bit further and go to the video clips of the YouTube videos from Eight Passengers. This is what's going on behind the scenes. It gives me goosebumps. The things that we will learn that these children, not just these children, but other people, right, in the community, other family members, the Jody's family member, have suffered at their hands is disgusting. Of course, this is all alleged right now, right? But you can't get around this. A boy in the state has escaped the home of Jody and come over to a neighbor's looking for help, period, right? This is absolutely unacceptable. Okay, let's go to the next clip. Okay. 
Is he, is your door locked? No, I'm sitting outside with him on the, on the front patio. Okay, cool. And he asked us to call the police. What's so he's very afraid. Are the neighbors out of their home, or is anybody looking for him that you can see? Uh, no. We are homes are far enough away. Uh, I'm not sure. How did you get out of the house? Uh, Orange. Yeah. He says he just left through the porch at the neighbor's house. Um, her name is Jody Hildebrand, and she lives two doors up the street. Yeah, I didn't tell you any of the houses are far apart, so he walked just under a block to get to our house. He rang my doorbell and asked me to call the police. Now, what I, one thing I want to do with this is to just give a shout out to this young man. The bravery that this took, it gives me goosebumps. It makes me literally want to cry. Like my face is doing that thing right now. The bravery that that took to go go to a neighbor's and say, call the police. Put yourself back to being a child. Like no matter what your situation was, well, I shouldn't say no matter what. You know how like you look at your parents, like they, you live in the world that your parents create for you. And so there's that phase where you might not know that something's not right, right? When you're really young. And then as you get older, you start being like questioning things like, well, wait, they don't live this way. And this doesn't feel good in that type of thing, right? So nonetheless, you know, those are your parents. They provide everything for you. So there's a fear of losing them, even if it's not the best situation. Now, granted, there can be some incredibly severe situations, which clearly it looks like we're looking at one. So for him to be at the point of like, the police need to get involved. I'm going next door in this state. I'm starved. I'm thirsty. I'm this. I mean, my God, what a scary, scary thing to do for him, right? Because you're a child. You just, the fact that a child's having to process this and live through this is horrible enough as it is. But I just kudos to him. So let's go on to the next club. Does he seem to be under the influence of drugs or alcohol? I don't think so, but he's very thirsty and... Do you uh, need an ambulance? I don't think he needs an ambulance. I'll let the cops decide that, but his ankles are taped up and he won't tell us why. Okay. But he has duct tape around each ankle. Yeah, there's sores around them. I think there's a good chance he's been... Uh, he also said, oh, and he has been around his ankles. I mean, his wrists as well. Okay, this boy has been... <laughs> this kid has obviously been... I think he's been... He's been detained. He's been... He's obviously covered in wounds. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit teary-eyed. Yeah, you know, when I listen to that part... It bothers me so bad, and I'm sorry, to hear him get that choked up at the state of this boy. I mean, it's absolutely just heartbreaking. And so to hear this man saying this, and again, I mean, can you imagine being the neighbor? And it's like you're sitting there like living your day out, and, and some, a child of all people comes up. In this state, wounds, tape, Asking for food and water and to call the police. I mean, my God. I just, I cannot imagine, you know, how scary. And to hear this man start to lose it shows you the severity and the depravity of it. Was there any other kids up at Jody's house? 10 and 14, and they're, they're still at this house. Um, are they tied up as well? What's um, the deal with? Are they um, are, are they being held? Are they are they do they have wounds on them as well? Nothing bad going on with them. Okay. Okay. Now, y'all, this part where the kid is saying nothing bad is going on with us. Oh my. I mean, but that's what I'm talking about. When you're a child, like, even if something, like, clearly to an adult is like, uh, this is wrong, right? He's still, he's, that's what he knows. He's been trained, right? This is what he's learned from his abusers is to protect the situation, to protect them. Nothing's wrong going on. I mean, the kids take the blame, right? The kids take the blame for this stuff, which is absolutely wrong. Uh, let's listen to one more clip of this. She's a bad lady. I didn't realize how bad... 
Does he have anything with him? Uh, no, he's wearing a long sleeve shirt and shorts, and uh, it's uh, way too big for him. Okay, now you heard that. She's a bad lady. We didn't realize how bad. Y'all, the information that has come out about, well, really both of them, but especially Jody, shocking. Shocking that nothing's been done so far. But we're going to hear from an interview here in a little bit of a family member that stayed with her and was like, people just don't believe her. She's very good at going and destroying people's credibility and this type of stuff, which incredibly toxic people like this. This is how they operate, right? They have to go out and destroy your credibility before people realize that it's really them. You know what I'm saying? And so obviously she was very good at doing that. And so it's interesting, again, just to hear the neighbors, like we knew she was bad, but like, whoa, right? And we'll read an article here in a minute, in a second. The things that the neighbors have to say are absolutely terrible. And now one thing I want to do is to go a little bit deeper into the Jody situation here, is I want to read an article. Now this was about how she lost her license at one point, and this is by Heather May, the Salt Lake Tribune. This it was from April 5th, 2012. Now this will give you an idea of what she is capable of. Now here's the thing, because we can't say a lot of these words that are mentioned in here. So rhymes, we're going to use the word corn and just do your imagination what rhymes with that. Okay. That starts with a P. Okay. So that's what that is. We're also going to have to blur some words out on the screen here. And so just know that, that we're working around, you know, some of the, you know, stuff here. Okay. So the article here on the screen, as we see, it says corn therapist disciplined for telling church BYU about man ethics counselor on corn addiction, who also taught to BYU violated state law. Now let's just get into this article a little bit. You can pause to read or just you know listen to me read it. So a corn addiction therapist has been reprimanded by the state for discussing a patient without his permission with his LDS church leaders and Brigham Young University, BYU, as it's become known to us who have been seemingly following cases coming out of Utah left and right, right? With the uh, people going to this university and that kind of thing. So all of the claims made by Jody and Ann Hildebrandt were false, the man asserts, but they led to his loss of privileges in the church and his rejection from BYU. She just lied wherever she went to, to further further an agenda to destroy my life, said the man, who objected to bills that were as high as two grand a month. We came there for marriage counseling and she pulled us into her corn marathon. I mean, Jody, this is not boding well. This goes against everything she said in that little welcome video. Now, it says Hildebrandt, a professional counselor, is on probation for 18 months and must meet 22 conditions or she could lose her license. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints said Wednesday that Hildebrandt is no longer on LDS Family Services referral list due to the case. Thank God. She is the director of Lifestar Utah County, a franchise of a national company based in Utah that specializes in pornography and sexual addiction. Excessive use of pornography is not recognized as a disorder by the American Psychiatric Association. The conditions of Hildebrandt's license include working under a supervisor approved by the Utah Division of Occupational and Professional Licensing. The supervisor will sit in on videotape or audio tape at least one clinical session a month and review 20% of her patient files according to a January order from DOPL. Now here's my thing with something like that. I'm like, do you think that would slow her role? She knows how to finagle things. You know what I'm saying? She would just have, I mean, she would work around this, you know, in, in my opinion. Let's go on to the next page. Now it does say that her lawyer, Robert Harrison, sent an email that her license is active and her practice has and will continue without interruption. In 2008, Hildebrandt provided therapy to a married couple identified by DOPL only as John and Jane Doe, who later divorced. Well, clearly, the therapy didn't take. John Doe agreed to an interview but asked not to be identified because he fears repercussions from the therapist. He has subsequently been told he can return to study at BYU if he chooses and he is currently a member of the church. Between 2008 and 2010, Hildebrandt repeatedly discussed the couple with her LDS clergy and other mental health therapists without having signed authorization, the DOPL order said. Okay, so now here's one thing on this. So and we'll hear from other people and, and whatnot about how she does this. This is her thing. And they're scared to death to come out because it's like, she'll go and destroy your life. Like this is what she, this is her currency is things like this. So she goes, gets ahead of the game, goes, destroys your reputation for whatever reason she's chosen to. So that when you try and repair this or go back or say she's taken advantage, people are already like, well, you're the problem, right? Again, we need Dr. Grande all over this, y'all. I'm telling you, we need Dr. Grande up in here, y'all. Okay. In 2009, she talked about John Doe to an honor code office at BYU 
in those conversations, Doe said she accused him of having serious problems but never actually diagnosed him or spent enough time with him to do so. She spent hardly any time knowing about my life, he said. She didn't want to talk about my personal goals or my progress. She would only threaten me that if I didn't take more sessions and have my wife take more sessions, the alleged addiction would destroy my life. In addition, while Hildebrandt was providing therapy to Jane Doe, she allowed the woman to work in her clinic without documenting whether she had given the patient information about the benefits or risk of blurring their therapeutic relationship. In an interview, John Doe said the couple had been referred to Lifestar for marriage counseling by their LDS bishop, whose brother co-founded the Murray-based National Lifestar Network. It licenses others to use its counseling materials. I mean, y'all, this whole thing right here is a hot... She's clearly grifting people's money, right? Okay, so John Doe said he did not have addiction issues, and once he began to question Hildebrandt's therapy, which caused 1200 to two grand a month, his personal life started to unravel. He believes Hildebrandt was using his marriage as leverage for me to pay for everything. And 100% she was, right? This is what she did. When he started to question it, she had no business counseling anybody. And the second someone would question it, she went around, she destroyed his reputation so that none of these people could come back on her. It's what she did does, right? She literally has people shaking in their boots because you know what it's like when you meet incredibly toxic people like this, and most of us have had some experience with it, they will stop at nothing. They have nothing going on in their own life but negativity and horrible things because they're usually doing all the things that they say somebody else is doing, right? And so often is the case with that. Well, look at what's going on behind the scenes at her place. She's abusing children, you know, grifting money, doing this, doing that, you know, but God forbid you question that. Oh no, she'll have your head on a platter. Okay, so now that we have gotten a lot of the information on Jody, let's go back over to Ruby Frankie and the kids. Okay, because one thing that we're going to see here in a little bit is an interview with a young lady. She's gone on a couple of things, and then this interview we'll watch is on a news channel who stayed with Jody, I believe her aunt, uh, for a little less than a year, and she tells a horrible story too. And she's like, make no mistakes, this behavior that you're seeing from Ruby is directly coming from Jody and her, like this is this is her philosophy on stuff. So now I want to watch some of these old clips and whatnot that have been put out there of, you know, Ruby and what's going on in the household and like their social media and all that type stuff. So again, same style, we're gonna watch and we're gonna talk about them. Sound like I'm like a mean barbarian, but I told the kids, I said, I'm not even gonna let you eat breakfast until you get your chores done. In the past, Frankie had addressed critics saying she wouldn't stop mothering her way. Online who hate me, who would like to cancel me, who would like to see me um, either burn in hell, as I have been told, or um, disappear off the face of the earth. And I'm not going anywhere. Okay, so we had to pause here for a second. Here's my thing. Now, obviously, you know that this is not my generation. I'm you know, in my 40s. So I didn't grow up with eight passengers or anything like that. Just, I never heard of them. Looking at this little bit, and I, I'm call me petty, but I'm looking at her and I'm like, this is not a well person. There's something very troubled in those eyes. Like, I'm hanging on for dear life to keep, you know, my world from crumbling, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's something wrong here. I mean, is it just me? And hopefully, hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. So that was a clip very quickly about her daughter who had left her lunch and she was like, mom, bring me lunch, but she wasn't going to. And she's just like, I hope nobody steps in. But she's just worried she doesn't have any food. Da, 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 da. You know, and it's just like, look, I'm all for teaching your kids accountability. You know, kudos to people for doing that in this day and age. But there's another level where it's like, girl, I mean, you know, seriously, like this is, you're messing with like, you know, nutrition, you know what I'm saying? Your child needs that. That's part of your job is to make sure that they have, you're or eating, you know, I get it. It might be a pain in the ass that she, you know, left the uh, food or whatever. But again, no, the context of this, even more so is to then go on and monetize the situation. Now at the end of the video, we're gonna talk a little bit about this whole dynamic because again as a creator i look at these things and in my mind i know what goes on of this is how you go about at least with my style how i make a video and so when i watch the family channels or people doing like putting things around I'm like were well, you really gonna say that you know that you're starving your kid out in knowing that they probably know that part of it is a reaction that's gonna get their thing views and clicks and all this kind of stuff is even that more troubling or looking at things that are supposed to be like a, oh i 
happy family day when I know you have to have lighting set up, you have to have cameras set up. This is not real. You know what I'm saying? And then clearly, I mean, their kids are running out, jumping out of the house to go have cops called on the parents. So there's that. Let's listen to another clip. It's been amazingly well behaved for being in town. Why for you like... yelled at me? <laughs> Shh. The fact that I yell at my kids is a secret. We don't want our viewers to know. Now, this could be just a, a funny little, you know, clip with a gesture of, you know, whatever. But given the context now, but again, every time, I mean, I'm sorry, but maybe it's because I've just, you know, I've seen, I know them through this own lens only. But anytime I see her interacting, I'm like, this is a very troubled woman. This is, this is a very broken person. You know, and again, I'm not a psychiatrist to diagnose her with something, but it's that, you know how when you see people, they've got that look. There's something in those eyes that are like, it, there's just, it's all broken back there. This is just the energy I get from her. I mean, again, let me know. I mean, is it just me? Because it's like, I only know her as this like, you know, scandalous, abusive type situation. I mean, I don't know. Let's listen to this other clip. Now, this one's a little bit longer because I want to pay attention in this one to the interaction uh, of what the son's saying, what she's saying, body language, this type of stuff. In the video, she explained her teenage son, Chad, had been sleeping on a beanbag for months. <laughs> sleeping on a beanbag. I've been sleeping on a beanbag since October. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave my broom back like two weeks ago. During the video, Frankie had her son explain why the privilege of a bedroom was taken away. Oh, I'll give you the reason why I lost my bedroom. I think so. I think this is the reason. At least this is the reason that's been in my head. It's pretty funny, but now that I look back, I mean, it's pretty depressing. No, we never told our viewers. That I woke Russell up at 2 in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he has to pack. <laughs> <laughs> and he got up and made his bed all neatly and then packed all his clothes in a suitcase. And then he walked out the door and I'm like, Russell, and he's like, what? And he's all happy. He has his sunglasses on. And I was like, we're not going to Disneyland. <laughs> and he started crying and hitting me. And then he went back to bed in tears and then... So that that was that was not <laughs> the reason you lost your room, but that was well, the other reason because I pointed a BB gun at his face. Pointed a BB gun at his face and hung him on the basketball. <laughs> <chest>. <laughs> not Chad showed that he was not able to manage himself sharing a bedroom with Russell. So when we moved, um, the bigger room in the basement was automatically his, and I didn't have a room, but we like put one on hold for me. So a lot of you are like, hey, that's not fair because Chad got the bigger, the lesser bedroom and Russell got the, the bigger bedroom. bedroom. <laughs> Russell got the big bedroom and Chad got the, the smaller bedroom smaller. and Russell's bigger bedroom also had a bathroom. But what you guys didn't know was <laughs> Chad didn't get any room. Mm -hmm. He didn't, he didn't get anything. He was sleeping on the floor in the family room and he just got the bedroom back and it's because he's shown up consistently without bullying the kids. Okay, so let's pause there for one second with this. I mean, first of all, and again, not having watched their channel, like, you know how some prank channels, I mean, for me, I'm just like, please tell me that these families and boyfriends and girlfriends and whatever are not pranking each other naturally like this, because can you imagine living like that and where at any moment somebody can massively prank you? Now, when he starts describing the whole thing if he woke his brother up at two in the morning and told him he was going to Disney World, I was like, that's gonna give him some points for creativity right there, okay? Bless the little boy. Can you imagine the disappointment? But here's the thing that I see in this. Notice how she kind of gloats about it. he didn't get anything. He didn't get a room. That bullying thing. So one thing that like with her and Jody, they seem to be are, are literal bullies, right? Well, how do you think your other older kids are going to be towards the younger kids? They're learning this behavior. So the things he's talking about, he pranks him on the Disney thing, hangs him on the basketball court, points a BB gun at his face. I mean, this is stuff that I, I mean would have me a little bit concerned. Like, uh, bro. You're going to kill your brother, right? Definitely psychologically scar him. You know, now granted, then you go to the thing of, well, we took it. He didn't have a bedroom. He didn't have a bedroom and <laughs> he didn't have a bedroom. That's pretty severe, right? Especially when clearly you're in the realm of you can have that. But it's like she gets off on that level of bullying that like I have this, that power play of I have this power over you. You're not going to have the bedroom, right? So let's listen to a little bit more of it and as well as some other behavior with her other kids. Chad hasn't had a flip phone, a smartphone, any kind of phone, and it's been over a year. Mm -hmm. And, um... I still have no intention of returning a phone. Abby, we took the phone away from Abby um, November. in November. 
Oh, and I just and you why. may you may never get the phone back. Probably not. Okay, now on this one, to me with a daughter, you can see where there's like some, you know, a little bit of anger beneath that. Which I mean, you would have to begin to resent your parents because imagine all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. Now, also, I'm of the generation. Like, so here's me right here. I'm like, they had flip phones, or they had phones. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, I didn't grow up with that. So to me, I'm just like, wow, like kids have phones these days. But then another part of me is like safety reasons, right? You know what I'm saying? Like you you must have to, right? And so. For her taking that away, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like that's like when I was growing up, the equivalent of taking a Nintendo away or the car, a, a source of freedom, you know, something like that or escape or something you enjoy. Now, also what it seems to be in this household is I imagine if you breathe wrong, they were going to severely punish you and do like you lost your phone for six months, you know, kind of a thing. So let's keep listening. Frankie then tells viewers this choice affects her just as much as it affects her children. When you make these choices with your family to take things away, as a parent, you really do want them to have these things. And it's been so, so, so difficult to take a phone away, to take a bedroom away, to take iPads away, to take access away. Like, it hurts me just as much as it hurts my kids. The oh, this is gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you thing. Yeah, mom. Now again, from a creator, creating content point of view where she's turning the phone to get the daughter's reaction. Remember, she's just sitting there holding a camera or a phone saying these things. So it's also like this passive aggressive way of telling your kids something. Yeah, because what really goes on behind the scenes when this is off, do they even have any kind of like communication or whatever? I doubt it. This is probably her version of telling her kids like, look, I'm the victim here when I took your phone away. And I do think there's a level where these kids, I mean, to me, like the daughter and stuff like that, they, they just look like they're over her, right? They're over it. And again, it's the bullying. It's almost like somebody has nothing better to do on their time, on their hands, than to just make stuff up and like make all these rules. And this is how this is going to be. And oh, you broke it. So you did this. Like they're acting like a jailer at a prison complex. No. been hiding from me and you are feeling a lot of embarrassment and shame I don't know you tell me what you're feeling mad because mad. I really won't get anything this summer I won't be able to go anywhere no I don't have any friends the video ends as Frankie kisses her son who's visibly upset And I love you with all my heart. Now, this is what's heartbreaking. Listening to all these kids, we don't have friends, we don't have friends. Because remember, at a certain point, all these allegations start coming out, right? And so you know their friends have to be like, you're being abused, or God only knows what they said. So you heard him like, oh, they were saying some pretty bad things. You know, I literally don't have any friends, and she doesn't have any friends. What's going on is, again, the monetization of the family has taken over. This whole thing of the parents, the mother's YouTube channel is front and center and that's like everything it's look at the jackson five right you know the dad just like drilled into them work 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 do all this well it's almost like the same type of thing of like look we're making money and getting attention as a family unit so this has now become the thing and unfortunately in this scenario these bizarre punishments that you know jody has her hands all wrapped up in are getting these major reactions and causing controversy which brings more viewers and likes and stuff like that to the channel maybe not likes but you know what i'm saying clicks is what i meant to say but this little boy, bless his heart. I mean, bless all their hearts, right? It's like, they're clearly upset. They're clearly not being heard. And then this whole thing of, and I love you with all my heart, that just gave like this energy of, I'm doing this for the camera, right? Which is so sad. I just got a text message uh, from Eve's teacher. And she said that Eve did not pack a lunch today. And can I bring a lunch over to the school? This happens quite often when you're having raising children. I know that her teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch. And it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with a lunch. Um, but I, I responded and just said, Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning. And she actually told me she did pack a lunch. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry. And hopefully, 
Hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. What a cold, cold heart. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I mean, it's just, you know, and, and the teacher, in this day and age, this might have flown 30 years ago. This day and age right here, if the teacher's saying, I'm uncomfortable with this, girl, you know that they're reporting. You know what I'm saying? Like, but again, it's the it's the audacity of her. She gets off on being this bully to her children. It's like such low-hanging fruit, right? The most vulnerable, po one of the most vulnerable populations out there, and you want to bully and torment them, you know, because you can. You know what I'm saying? It's literally what it comes down to. Absolutely disgusting. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to kind of go, and look at something different. We, I want to watch an interview this is on KUTV2 News Salt Lake City and this was with Jesse Hildebrandt and she speaks about her time staying with her aunt at her jo at Jody's house I've taken some clips from it so that we can talk about uh, the main takeaways here but to hear from somebody who has survived this situation and what she has to say again my kudos go out to her very brave young lady for getting out here and spreading her story but just pay attention to the things we and keep in mind as we pay attention to the things we've already heard and now listen to somebody recalling their time with it you were also under her care at one point right yeah i was i was left in her care when i was a teenager um, for a little under a year. So that was just building the foundation. I wanted y'all to know that's what it was a little under a year. At least keep going. The, I mean, I, and I understand this, but it's interesting to watch the world respond to her and kind of putting her as, at the forefront. And I understand that she's the mother of these children and, it's, and it makes sense. But the philosophies and the therapeutic modalities that she's using our Jodies. Now, this is what I was talking about before, where, you know, okay, this is coming from Jody, this kind of a thing. And so, again, I think it's very brave of this young lady to make sure, be making sure that she's like, look, I don't want Jody to be able to slither away from this. And I think she even says those exact words later. So just keep this in mind the things that we've seen, the behaviors and all that, that's coming. And, and obviously, the child escaped from Jody's house, right? So, this is coming from there. Uh, let's keep going. The things that I experienced while living with Jody, I experienced being tied, I experienced being duct taped, I experienced being blindfolded, I experienced uh, severe isolation, I experienced severe emotional, spiritual, and psychological abuse. I experienced um, the being told I, I I shouldn't be around other people, being told that I was dangerous to be around. Um, I was. People were afraid of me to the point where I was afraid of myself. Um, wow, sounds like a real empowering woman, old Jody. Again, look back to all the the the, the horn tooting, the pats on the back she gave herself about how wonderful she is. This is what's going on behind closed doors. Children escaping her house and duct tape is what's going on behind closed doors. And again, I'll say it a hundred times. Be very leery when you sit here and see people talking about, I have the answers, you know, oh, I'm this, I'm that, but, 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 you know, in this day and age where anybody can call themselves anything on the internet, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, oh, I'm with this and that, and, you know, and now, okay. Absolutely not. <laughs> Just absolutely not. Can you imagine the damage that this woman has done to God knows who throughout her lifetime that are too scared to come forward, right? That's, again, why these people who are speaking out, this young lady here, Jesse, hats off to you, girl. I mean, this takes a major kahunis to be doing this, right? And so, but this is what it takes. And she's been doing this for, like, she, and she'll say in this at one point, like, look, nobody's listened so far. And that's what's so frustrating about so many of these cases. But for now, let's keep going. Um, I never was allowed privacy unless I was isolated. So that included the bathroom. I was never allowed to have the door closed because she was convinced that I was just constantly masturbating. She was convinced that I was addicted to porn. Um, I had never seen porn at that point in my life. I, mm -hmm. I'd never, I didn't even know that people with <laughs> my anatomy could. Now here's my other thing, which I, what is her obsession with, you know, corn, bodily functions, things like that. Like, what is her obsession with this? Because remember, oftentimes when we see people, especially ones that might display signs of narcissism and things like that, they are projecting their own stuff onto others. So it makes you wonder, like, girl, what's really going on behind the scenes over here? She wanted to make my life so uncomfortable that it would force the sin out, that it would force me to confess. So things continuously got worse and worse and progressively more and more 
intense. Now, this is the other thing. We heard the same narrative from that other dude that, you know, she got in trouble for, and we'll hear it from other people as well, where it's like this, you know, forced thing. And again, you have to ask why. It's like, do they just enjoy torturing people? I mean, like, what is the point of all this? Aside from siphoning money from people and power and things like that, which I guess it could be just that, you know, but I also often wonder with people who do stuff like this, are they trying to soothe their own internal messed upness by trying to do this to other people, you know? I don't know if that makes sense or not, but it's like, I want to categorize it and give it reason. It can't just be this awful thing, right? And she is remarkably convincing. She is also terrifying if you cross her because she she has and will systematically destroy your life. She destroys your reputation. She d- destroys any of, of your credibility. So even, because there are definitely people that have been speaking out against her. I mean, she was, re- she lost her license because of someone speaking out in 2012. Like, this is not, she's not just, everyone's not just been like, okay, yeah, for sure, free, fair game, free, free for all. People have been criticizing her. That's just that no one has listened. This right here, it's this for me. When she's sitting here talking about that and she'll destroy your life, she'll do this, she'll do that. And this is a frightening human being, right? I mean, thank God Jesse survived her. You know what I'm saying? Like on multiple levels, right? Survived the time of the house. You know, we hear Jesse talk, I don't know if I took the clip out, but I mean, she did these things to Jesse, right? She did this exact thing she's talking about and she's done it to plenty of other people. Look at the guy again from BYU who she went around and like, destroyed his reputation because he was questioning hers. Again, these people are dangerous. And the fact that they often masquerade around as these mental health therapist people, I mean, it's scary. Tricky is that she utilizes and uses whatever is available. So if you go to her with OCD, if you go to her with severe depression, she'll use that information as a way of control oh, you have OCD because you have deep-rooted shame. And those ticks are happening because the shame has nowhere to go. And so it's coming out in this, like, this neuroticism. I personally think that stuff like that, that Jody is just describing what's going on with her own self, right? And it's Jody in this situation, but in other situations like this, it's what takes place, right? It's almost like they project all that onto other people when that's really what's going on with them. <laughs> she, is a, she, is a, she is a very unwell person. I don't I, I don't know her ex- exact diagnoses, but I know that she's been diagnosed with a plethora of things. Um, this right here, saying it louder for the ones in the back, girl. I mean, <laughs> damn. Man. I mean, whatever that book is, I, I don't remember the name of where that book is that they have the diagnosis in there. Girl, I mean, pictures all over it, right? And I like, she's like, I don't know the diagnosis, but she's been hit left and right. If if a tree was full of diagnoses, she was hitting every damn branch on the way down, okay? <laughs> I mean, come on. Woo, let's keep going. Even though Ruby's the focus, I just hope that Jody is not... Um that she's not able to slink away. That's what I was talking about earlier. And because of people like Jesse coming out and speaking and putting this out there and risking her own life and well-being and mental health to do this, it will be what takes her down because that's what it takes. People like this, hopefully this will be able to take her down, right? And to take her down, meaning Jody. Again, kudos to those speaking out. I, I thank you for doing so. Thank you for doing humanity a service. Uh, let's move on. Now, with all this in mind, let's go to a look at an article. And this this is like the, what the neighbors are having to say and whatnot about the kids and Ruby Frankie and all that type of stuff. So let's read it. I'll put it up on the screen. We'll talk about different parts of it. So as we see here, the article title is called Neighbors Say They Tried to Help Ruby Frankie's Kids Before YouTubers Arrest on Child Abuse Charges. One neighbor said she called Utah's Department of Health and Human Services seeking help for the kids. And again, a shout out to the people who saw something and said something along the way, right? I know it's a scary thing to do because you don't know what's going to happen or what could, you know, whatever. Ever, but again, kudos to people for seeing something and saying something. Cannot stress that enough. Okay, so it says two neighbors who spoke on the condition of anonymity, citing concerns for their safety, this is a common theme, said that they and others who lived near the family had long been worried for the safety of the children and that neighbors in the community had previously alerted the Utah Division of Child and Family Services. Everyone is just breathing a collective sigh of relief because we thought that they were going to come out of that house with body bags, a male neighbor said. I mean, let me catch my breath gives me goosebumps i mean my god can you imagine 
that that is your opinion of this household. Again, think back earlier to the clips of the videos, the video titles from Vinny that he was showing, all this little happy da 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 This is what the neighbors are saying. Behind that, the neighbors are like, we thought body bags would come out of there. I mean, come on, right? Let's go to the next page. Neighbors said Frank would insert herself into other neighbors' lives. One neighbor cited an instant, uh, instance in which Frankie gave a sermon-like lecture over what she called inappropriate posters of women posing in shorts that were displayed in a garage. Frankie kicked her husband Kevin out of the home last year, a source with knowledge of their relationship said. Now, this is the thing. You can completely see her doing this lecture into the whole neighborhood. A hundred percent was on, it had to be on the HOA. Had to be on the HOA. I'm curious if anybody knows because you, a hundred percent, like you could see her being like with the measuring thing for grass. The neighbor's grass is a centimeter long. Let's cite them. You know what I'm saying? But this is the type of thing. It's that, and I, can't, I don't know if I can get the word right now, but it's like when you're holier than thou with people and like that whole thing uh, of like with the kids is power that she has over them and self-righteous is what I'm looking for. Just a self-righteous person but is a mess behind the scenes. It's that hypocrisy of these personality types that literally angers me to no end because if you've dealt with these type people in your lifetime, this is their MO. They are train wrecks. They are nightmares. They are doing this kind of stuff but they will never see it and they will point out everybody else's flaws and live in their little pretend world. So let's go on to the next thing. So it says neighbors accused Frankie of withholding food as a punishment for her children's behavior that was also shared on her YouTube channel. They also claimed that after her husband was out of the home, Frankie would leave the house for weeks at a time with the children inside. I remember that she took away their Christmas one year, the male neighbor said, and she would say things like they're not repenting correctly, which is a Mormon term for their sinning just complete insanity, he said. The male neighbor recalled how Frank's youngest daughter, Eve, who was about 10 years old, would wander the neighborhood while her mother was away for prolonged periods after she kicked Kevin Frankie out of the house. Eve would look for companions in the community, the neighbor said. The neighbor said it did not seem like she was attending school. She would just knock on your door and say, hi, can your kids play, he recalled, and we're like, well, they're at school. They won't be home for three or four hours, and she'd be like, I'll wait, he added. She's like this lost child. Again, sitting here touting these amazing parenting skills and the kids are wandering the streets while she's just gone for weeks and I mean this is insanity absolute insanity and the neighbors sadly are having to sit by and like do what they can obviously to help but clearly nobody was listening just like Jesse said now a female neighbor said she and others in the community had tried to get authorities to intervene for at least a year the female neighbor said she thought things were bad for the children but she said she was deeply upset after she learned about the condition they were found in. I'm really angry because I spoke up. Other people spoke up, she said, and nothing happened. The female neighbor said she and others in the neighborhood asked the Utah Division of Child and Family Services to intervene multiple times. The female neighbor said she made an initial call to CPS around September 2022. She then got a voicemail which she shared with NBC News in response. In the voicemail, a person who identified herself as working for the Child Protective Services said she was talking with someone who had some concerns about someone in your area. After that, she said she saw authorities making a wellness check. However, she said no one answered the door for the officers. At some point after the officers left, papers were put up in the windows of the home, both neighbors said. The state health and human services department did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Now, how often do we see these scenarios where either CPS is like this, they're called, never does anything, never happens, never does this, but then so, thank God the kids are alive is what I'll get at. Another broken system right there, in my opinion. Okay, so now let's move on to the recent court appearance. And, you know, if you don't know, when I know, Jody and Ruby are being held without bail. They went to court. Uh, and some huge allegations have come out in some of these court hearings. There's different ones. But what I want to do is talk about an update with that and then go over those shocking allegations that Ruby threw out during a custody hearing. So let's first start with just a couple of quick updates. So, so it says Ruby Frankie was moved into a medical block in jail. Jody Hildebrandt has life-threatening health issue. This is by Sean Newman. Uh, this is a People 
Magazine article. Let's go on to the next page. Now, it does say that Ruby and Jody, the parenting podcasters charged last week with felony child abuse, have both experienced medical issues in recent days while being held at the county jail. Now, it does say that Frankie 41 was moved to a medical observation block on Friday before returning to the usual holding block after the weekend. It says Hildebrandt is currently being held in observation. Her attorney told a judge this past weekend that she has experienced a life-threatening medical issue resulting in her hospitalization for several days. Now, their details aren't too clear, but I do find it interesting and it kind of reminds me of the whole, you can dish it, but you can't take it. Okay, now let's move on to those shocking allegations. So here, this is a Daily Mail article. It's by Alan Butterfield. And it says here, exclusive YouTuber mom Ruby appears in court and turns on her children, making outrageous claims about their behavior and accusing them of a certain type of abuse. So let's go ahead and review some of the highlights of this article. So it says, speaking to the public courtroom on Thursday, the Mormon mom at times broke down as she made shocking claims that one of her minor children abused their sibling and molested several other family members and children in the neighborhood over the years. Now, this was of a certain type of abuse that you can imagine. Uh, the popular YouTuber was arrested with her business partner, Jody last month and charged with six counts of felony child abuse after one of her sons was discovered with open wounds and duct tape on their limbs. Now, just moving on to this final part here, seeming to pin the blame for her behavior on her children, Frankie went into horrific detail about how one of her six kids abused other children. She claimed that one of the Frankie kids began looking at pornography at, at just three years old. And one of the most shocking claims Frankie said that her child had been you know a certain type of abusing uh, a younger sibling for years adding that eventually the two of them began to abuse other children she also claimed her two children played a padding game with each other but did not go into further detail Frankie said that in May her child confessed to a certain type of abuse to 20 people including cousins and neighbors she provided no proof of her sickening allegations the court went eerily silent after Ruby made the disturbing claims the judge then said that her alleged abuse of child will have to be placed in a home with no other children now here's my thing with this <sighs> do we think do we know if this true we have no idea right we can't believe a word this woman says and personally i would almost think that she is also trying to continue to victimize the children remember what jesse said they will go around and destroy your reputation what do you think she's doing now she is trying to destroy these children's reputation so that there's no question there now they couldn't get any comment or quotes from the uh, like a mother of one of the alleged abused children was there want to make a comment don't blame her kevin the husband who you see in the picture on the article didn't make a comment now a lot of people are like well, what's up with kevin what's up with kevin he has not been charged okay now they're not giving it doesn't seem like he's has the kids either but he's not been charged with this this seems like a scenario that was going on with frankie now i'm not sure if he can get hit with like he was allowing it to happen or something like that but remember she threw him out of the house right so this is specifically the things that are going on with you know like her and jody that's like a her and jody thing right so yeah i mean <laughs> you know the dad's along for this ride and that he's going to the court things uh, you know he's showing up for the stuff and i can only imagine what that must be like okay so let's talk about this now again probably by the time you watch this five more things would have come out about this you know this case it's just every day so i wanted to start somewhere where I kind of go over all the stuff that I was seeing out there and then continue to just dive deeper into it with other videos. Now, I want to speak to one thing, like I was saying earlier, and this is like, so if you make content creation or of any kind, then you know, like, okay, you have to do certain things, right? Like I've got a, a ring light, a camera here, you know, my computer, this and the other. Now, granted, I'm not making family vlog channels, right? But when I watch stuff like this and I see her talking on the thing and like making all these videos, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, she's just doing this because she's gotten in this thing of the algorithm is giving her attention for abusing the children. As horrible as that sounds, right? But it's like, this gets reactions, people comment on it, it makes the videos go out there, the content, whatever it is, and it gets more attention. Now, I'm not saying like, oh, so she, you know, whatever, it's not her fault. No, absolutely. She 100% knows what she's doing because I think she also gets off on this power of abusing the children. Like, this is somebody who enjoys wearing the, the the crown of this little kingdom she's created, you know? But then even going back to, like, the the videos that Vinny was showing of their eight passengers, you know, and I'm just like, well, what was going on back then? You know, like, what was life like? You hear the kids saying they don't have any friends, they're very lonely, they are clearly were being abused on some level, of whatever that might be. Now, maybe life was better when dad was around, I don't know. But it's like, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, it's just like, 
able to do this. It's so manufactured. And so this brings in the whole thing of like, okay, you, know, you get into like the, the monetization of family, the monetization of children, you know, and you see these you know, the family vlog channels and this and the other. And this is not to say all of these channels are like this at all. But with scenarios like this pop off and so many of these have gone off over the years where, you know, it turns out the parents are doing awful things to the children because at the end of the day, the children end up being their meal ticket. And there's a serious conflict of interest there because they're the parent. They're supposed to make wise decisions, but they're making money off of these children in this way and the attention that they're getting on social media from it. And clearly this is what was going on. You know, she was loving this attention. I mean, you saw her gloating on there about the things she was doing to the kids. I mean, it's disgusting. And so then to me, I'm like, well, of course your kids are going to be bullies to one another. Like this is what their lesson, they're learning this from you, you know, Miss Ruby Frankie. So that part is very sad. Now, I mean, the whole thing is sad. Again, I want to also say shout out to all the people who have come forward and are speaking out and risking their livelihoods, their faces, all this stuff, because I do believe that this is, they finally got these monsters, right? They finally got them. I think that this will, this will take them down. Having children escape your home with wounds and duct tape on them is not a cute look. And then especially when people start uncovering that you're out here, I'm an expert. I can solve your life. You know, and all this stuff. I mean, are you kidding me? Are you can cannot roll my eyes hard enough at it? Okay, it makes me sick to my damn stomach. So here's the thing: the victims are these children. They've now been displaced. The mother is now saying that they've done all this crazy stuff to other people and family members and kids. So this is going to cause even further complications. We don't know if this is true or not. You know, at this point, I just don't believe a word that the mother says. Now, also, you know, this will bring into play. Like, I want, you know, I also question at some point in time: are they going to make laws or something to where basically I'm just like, you know what? You can't. It would be so tricky to do that. Well, guys and say it's like you can't monetize uh, or not monetize but like you know make these family vlog channels like this or whatever like something has to go into it but again that's like getting into your own personal freedom and rights and stuff like that and i understand that because there's just as many people who are making wholesome good content for families right but it's just you run into these specific things like this where behind the scenes they're a nightmare and they're exploiting and damaging and abusing their children i'm curious to know what you think where do you think this is go i think that this is taking them down i don't think that they will recover from this what i mean by recover is get away with it I don't think that you can get away with this. I think there's too much evidence already. Again, looking at Ruby Frankie and really both of them, I'm just like, oh, there, there is some brokenness going on there. You know, hurt people hurt people. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that is 100% what's going on here. And again, she's still trying to do so. It will be very interesting to hear the husband speak out if he you know if and when he does and to see where this ends up in court so that being said y'all i know this was a super long video oh my god thank you to everybody who's been sending me stuff and asking me about specific parts of this you know because this has kind of helped me narrate like i want to focus on a b or c so continue to do so and that's it let me know what you think down in the comment section roscoe is still sleeping right next to me he's such a little snuggle buggle for the little rock videos like this let's get some love <laughs> Pretty drop the sofas. Even though he's sleepy, he does ask that you drop some sofas in the comment section below. Yeah, lots of sofas. Lots of sofas, he says. And until we meet down in the comment section to hang out in those little miniature sofas and to talk about this hot mess express, I'll see y'all there.